Hello YouTube, welcome to another episode of Awkward Conversation. Today I'm with Professor Anthony Tate. How are you? Great, nice to be with you. Um, professor, could you briefly uh, introduce yourself, please? My name is Anthony Tate, I'm a professor here in the Department of Supply Chain Management. I teach courses in supply chain, uh, the management of the supply chain, as well as finance supply chain. I know that you've uh, had a very diverse career. You've worked in supply chain, finance, and consulting. So why did you decide to teach supply chain? Well, you know, I think it was a, uh, just a natural uh, progression, if you would. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I spent uh, uh, a long career on, on, on Wall Street, uh, worked uh, in consulting areas as well. And uh, all businesses are part of the supply chain, mm -hmm. uh, whether they're in manufacturing, whether they're service-related companies, they have a supply chain. And uh, one can take a look at the flow of uh, goods and services from the um, uh, point of uh, its origin all the way mm -hmm. through to uh, consumption by the customer or the consumer. I know you went to Rutgers. What kind of student were you? Were you an outgoing student? Uh, were you involved in campus? Were you in a fraternity? Well, you know, I uh, when I'm in a fraternity, um, I, um, I I try to be a diligent student. Um, you know, uh, you know, college is a um, is a privilege, um, and but also you don't want to waste time. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, focused on my academics and uh, tried to get through it as uh, quickly as I could. Um, were you involved on campus? Uh, just to some minor degree, because I was also working full time, um, and some um, some of those days overlapped um, the, the period overlap with uh, mm -hmm. my academic uh, studies as well. Uh, but I think what you were starting to ask me about was, um, you know, how I entered really uh, figuring out where I wanted to point myself. Uh -huh. um, so you know, growing up, I always wanted to be a program analyst okay. and um, coming out of school I, uh, I went working for a, um, a, a bank mm -hmm. um, in their uh, programming department we supported um, the trading department it was really domestic money transfer and um, you know after being in that uh, field for a relatively short period of time I, I kind of discovered that um, I, I didn't want to be in cold computer rooms and mm -hmm. dealing with coding. Mm -hmm. And through a series of events that, that took place, an error with some coding and some problems with uh, getting money out of the bank uh, banking system uh, to pay for securities that had been purchased, um, I, I went with my boss. We ended up going on the trading floor. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, just having some cursory knowledge about what was going on, just the energy and um, uh, you, you know the, the noise from people talking about the economy and pricing and mm -hmm. what was going on you know, around the globe, it, it really attracted me uh, to that industry. And uh, uh, about a year later, uh, mm -hmm. I, I got into that, that department and that kind of launched my career see, uh, in the investment community. Could you tell us why you majored in political science and how it helped you in the business field? Well, some of it is that I um, had thought that I wanted to go down the path of being a lawyer as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I like the, um, the idea of putting together a case, having supporting um, uh, documentation around uh, representing uh, someone and so that was kind of like the path that a, a lot of students would take you know you uh, become a political science major mm -hmm. from there you go on to law school uh, but that ultimately was not the path that I took and one of the things I, I try to tell students um, is a great book that's out there written by Thomas Friedman um, you know thank you uh, thanks for being late mm -hmm. and it means that uh, you know you get an opportunity when you're young um, to change course, to really kind of find out what you're passionate about, what your skills are, your personality, because in general, you know, you got to be happy every day to wake up and, and go do what you have 
decided to do as a career. What made you not uh, pursue a career in law? Well, you know, I, I, some of it was very practical. Um, I think the road was is very long in terms of uh, uh, becoming a, a lawyer. But I think the other side was that, it, you know, the passionate side is that when I when I kind of found this area of uh, you know investments and trading and investment banking and Wall Street, mm -hmm. that it's a industry that's that's very aggressive. Um, uh, you have to have a lot of knowledge about a lot of things that are going on. Uh, I tend to be a multitasker by nature, and so we, it, it fit my personality uh, very nicely. Okay. And okay. therefore, um, you know, I just followed the momentum mm -hmm. uh, in going into that field. You're a big proponent of reading books. Could you tell us why students should read books and how uh, it can be beneficial to them? Well, you know, I, I learned to read and was encouraged to read from the time I was you know, a boy. Um, our home, there were always books that were there and the value of reading them because knowledge is transferred mm -hmm. uh, through reading. Uh, you also have the sense of um, reading in a broad way, mm -hmm. but reading so that uh, you have different perspectives mm -hmm. on a particular issue. So I always tell students, you know, it doesn't matter what your political affiliation is, doesn't matter where you come from, but read a lot of different writers, read different papers, read the New York Times, read the journal, um, uh, read uh, materials on the internet that are uh, from Republicans or Democrats, so that you have a more holistic view mm -hmm. of particular subjects. Okay. And so you have knowledge transference. Mm -hmm. Then number two, when you read, and you read at a certain level, your vocabulary increases right. as well, mm -hmm. and your thought process, and all these things translate into uh, assets for you in mm -hmm. the business world. Okay. You've also worked in the public sector as well. Do you think you can uh, share your experience working there? Well, uh, and I guess by public sector, you're speaking about the government? Yeah. Right, so I, uh, I work in the private industry, but mm -hmm. in some of the companies I've worked for, we um, advise the uh, uh, federal government on different um, initiatives and programs that they had. So people are very familiar with some of the accounting firms that have um, consulting practices. Mm -hmm. So uh, some firms that I work for, we, um, uh, we joined uh, with some of the consulting firms mm -hmm. because we had a certain level of expertise from the um, financial side that they didn't have. And uh, we, we joined with them in providing um, uh, consulting services to you know, the federal, mostly the federal government. So whether it was um, uh, the Government National Mortgage Association, mm -hmm. uh, Housing uh, Association, Fannie and Freddie, and we did uh, uh, various analytics pricing of some of their portfolios, okay. as well as some of the uh, programs that they had that initially helped to lower the cost of borrowing mm -hmm. for um, um, individuals that were below a certain economic level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when you worked there, were, um, were you rubbing elbows with uh, politicians and famous people? <laughs> well, yeah, that's um, some of the benefit that you get, that you, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're able to uh, meet some uh, senators, you're able to uh, interact with um, some cabinet members, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been fortunate to have uh, met a few presidents of the United oh, wow. States, and those are all, um, you know, very um, distinguished and, and, and privileged contacts oh, wow. okay. that that, uh, that I've been able to make over the years. So you have. Uh friends that are politicians. <laughs> well, I have friends in every place. <laughs> okay. uh, I'd like to show you uh, these photos that I found online. Did, could you tell us what event uh, this was? Well, yeah, uh, two of those, uh, the one that you're showing me here, um, uh, this photo was at a, um, um, a Skybridge um, uh, capital management uh, holiday mm -hmm. uh, uh, get together. This particular uh, photo is with my partner, Brian Milan, oh, okay. and uh, his uh, fiance, uh, Beverly Johnson, who is uh, the first African-American supermodel, the first African-American supermodel ever on the 
cover of Vogue magazine. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other uh, photo that you had was with uh, the uh, founding partner of Skybridge, which is uh, Anthony uh, Scaramucci, who happens to be a, a very well-known mm -hmm. uh, businessman. And uh, I'm happy to count him as a friend. And he also uh, worked uh, for the uh, Trump administration mm -hmm. um, sometime last year. What do you think is one skill or trait that uh, helped you in every uh, sector you worked in? Well, I, I think that, um, you know, it's a given that to be successful, you, you have to be smart, you have to have a level of intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, I think that people also uh, value people that have high integrity, mm -hmm. um, being able to communicate well, mm -hmm. uh, articulate yourself uh, with people. I think those are really uh, very important elements that you bring with you mm -hmm. uh, into into your business. Okay. Right. So you got to be smart. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have to have the highest integrity mm -hmm. because your word is your bond, mm -hmm. uh, especially on Wall Street. And, and, and then I think being able to communicate uh, mm -hmm. well with people uh, helps you to be successful also. Okay, let's uh, end this interview by asking you for an advice for uh, any students who want to go into uh, investment banking, finance, jobs, you know, Wall Street. Well, I think that it's an exciting field. Um, it's, um, you know, the major leagues of the major leagues. Um, I think you have to be passionate about what you want to do as a career. Uh, you, should, you should go in with your eyes wide open. There's a tremendous amount of commitment. Um, it's an aggressive industry. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be rewarding. I know most, most uh, students think of just the monetary rewards. But I always tell students that um, you're, going to, um, you're going to be uh, paid well if you do well. Mm -hmm. And so the effort has to be there, right? The commitment, the dedication and commitment to excellence. And I think that, you know, your boss, your team that you work with, they, once they see that commitment to excellence, the ability to learn, uh, uh, work with people very well, that, uh, that tends to lead you to a very successful career. Okay, thank you very much. Well, Sean, it's been a pleasure meeting Likewise. with you. Thank Likewise. Thank you very much. Thank you.